As the Carolina Panthers continue to rack up loss after loss, a lot of our issues can be attributed to our inability to consistently produce an effective pass rush. A lot of those issues can be attributed to a young player that we drafted just two years ago that has not lived up to any of our expectations so far. And we're going to talk about that player right after this. I'm from the foe. You did. I am Jamari Overshad. This is The Way I See It, a Carolina Panthers and Charlotte Hornet fan channel. Please do me a favor by hitting the like button and please make sure you subscribe to the channel. I am on my road to 1,000 subscribers. Now, the player in question for this video is none other than Yitor Gross Matos. He was a 2020 second round pick drafted by the Carolina Panthers. And up until this point in the season and pretty much overall in his um short two and a half year career he has not been able to progress to a level that the Carolina Panthers have ascended in any way with his presence being felt heavily on the field he was moved in to replace a very effective pass rusher that we had last year and he is having an absolute terrible year and the question came the question that I have that has come to my mind is is it fair to at this point in his career just go ahead and admit that he was a bad pick nearly three years into his career. Well, let's dive into some information that I've collected for this video, and I'm gonna explain why I think that that's pretty much the case. He was a bad pick. So we're gonna start with his draft profile. Now first, uh, he was a he is six he was 6'5", 266 pounds, coming out of Penn State. He had a 6.5 prospect grade uh, by NFL.com. Now, this grade was on a uh, graded boom or bust potential, meaning he was right there on the line if he could hit, but he, uh, just as, just as high as his ceiling was, that was equivalent to how low his flow, uh, his floor was. So it was pretty much graded as, okay, you're taking a shot on this player. Um, we took him, uh, what, 38th overall, uh, si the sixth overall pick in the second round. Now, I just want to read the first um, line in this overview that was provided in this draft profile by NFL.com. Uh, an ascending 4-3 defensive end who should go from good size to an imposing frame as he, as he fills out his power forward body type. Now, we're going to move on to what they said were some weaknesses as well as some skills about Yitor Gross Matos coming into the draft. Now, I'm, got, I'm not going to take the time to read all of them, but I did take the time to mark down a couple that I myself can look at because a lot of these are technique things, and I cannot critique technique, but I can critique the effectiveness of what I see on the field. Now, first in his strengths, they said he posted 35 tackles for loss and 17 and a half sacks um, in two years as a starter in college. Now, that sounds good. I cannot uh, cough at that. He easily cro uh, he easily cro crow hops uh, over ch uh, cut block attempts. In the NFL, he does not see cut block attempts. That uh, he he is not that caliber of player that deserves that type of attention. Um, adequate upfield rush burst. That is not the case for what I've seen so far with Gross Matos. So these things were these things stood out to me as far as when they uh, highlighted them as strengths because I've said uh, I would have to say these things have not translated well. Uh, whatsoever. Now let's move on uh, to the weaknesses. Uh, he takes time to disengage when reached. Now what I want to say about that is he never disengages. I, I've never seen him um, get what I guess would be considered a coverage sack um, where the, the secondary is doing a, a, a excellent job on the play and the quarterback holds the ball for so long. Like that just never happens. He's never in the backfield. He almost never produces any pressure. So that weakness has translated and has not um, ascended or gotten better in any way since reaching the NFL level. And the second thing I want to point out is uh, Rush isn't, exp uh, uh, isn't built upon explosive movements or power. That is an out like a... That sounds like an outstanding weakness that would push somebody past, um, like he was drafted right out of the, like just out of the range of the first round, just a few picks after. This weakness sounds like something that should be damning enough to push him to at least the, you know, the, the second, the third or fourth day. But I guess they took a chance on him due to his size. But I did want to, you all uh, to know and make note that during his senior season, which was, um, I'm, I'm assuming like most players, the season that took his draft profile to what it was the day that he was drafted, he did play alongside Dallas Cowboys star 
pass rusher Micah Parsons. And even during his time back then, he was a few class of, uh, at least one or two classifications ahead of Micah at the time. And during their time there, uh, during um, Gross Matos' junior year, the year he came out, Parsons actually had nearly 70 more tackles than him at 69 more tackles. He only had one less tackle for loss. He uh, Parsons had 14, Gross Matos had 15, and Parsons only produced four and a half less sacks at five and gross models had nine and a half and as you all know parsons was not exclusively played as a edge rusher back there uh back in that time so we could say that he maybe uh 25 to 33 percent of the time actually blitzed or actually rushed the passer back then and while playing with him uh in a younger classification he consistently and overwhelmingly outplayed Yitor Gross Matos even at that time. So one could imagine that Gross Matos was able to put up these stats because he was playing alongside Micah Parsons, who is the current front runner for the NFL Defensive Player of the Year. So do with that information as you may. But to me, that rings the bell of uh, he, he wasn't that good in college and we probably just took a chance on him anyway. Now, moving forward, these this is a list of players that were currently available when we actually reached and took Yitor Gross Matos at the 38th overall pick. Now, first, we have the current, in my opinion, NFL uh, front runner for MVP who has led his team to a perfect 7-0 and in Jalen Hurts, quarterback of the, uh, of the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. We could have had uh, we could have had him who went he went over ten picks later in the second round and we were in court we were having quarterback we were in a quarterback quandary in the uh, at the time that we had this draft and we did not take hurts that uh that hurts no pun intended looking back on that we have Antoine Winfield Jr. the safety for uh, who was drafted to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He is a one-time Pro Bowler as well as a Super Bowl champion since coming into the year. And in a PFF redraft, they actually um, they actually said that we would have took we would have taken Winfield uh, with our first overall pick, which was uh, the seventh uh, in a redraft. But I think the way that Derrick Brown is performing this year, that's that's probably wrong. But we had the opportunity to get Winfield in this spot, and we passed up on him. Now we have. All pro cornerback, also of the Dallas Cowboys, similar to how I mentioned Micah Parsons, um, I think broke the record for uh, uh, in a, uh, interceptions in a year. Trayvon Diggs, brother to all pro wide receiver Stephon Diggs. He was available in the second round, and the, um, the Carolina Panthers passed on him. Chase Claypool, a wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers, recently traded to the... Um, to the Bears, he had an absolutely uh, excellent rookie year playing alongside Ben Roethlisberger in his last year, a big body guy that can go up and get the ball and would have been excellent alongside DJ Moore. And finally, we have the guy that we actually did end up selecting later on in the draft, but up until this point, he was more deserving of this selection of the first player picked in the second round that we took, uh, be it Jeremy Chin, our star safety, who has a lot of accolades to come in his short career, but I could see, I could see him. He is going to retire at Carolina Panther and he is going to be an excellent player. Now that is just a few players that we could have taken instead of the guy that is not giving us uh, any stats. Now, now I want to just talk about what I see when I look at the game week after week and I look over at Gross Matos' side of the line. Now, first of all, um, this guy was used as a, um, a justification as to why the team was comfortable letting Hassan Reddick, who is now a um, member of the Philadelphia Eagles, um, last month, he, uh, a few weeks ago, he was the NFC Defensive Player of the Week. Maybe the month, I can't remember, but he was a double-digit sack guy for us last year alongside Brian Burns, who had an excellent year last year, which actually led to him being selected as the 76th best player on the NFL Top 100 as voted on by his peers. So um, Gross Matos was supposed to be able to progress and step into the role and basically at least fill up hopefully 75 to 80% of the slack that Hassan Reddick left behind. But he has not been able to do 
any of that so far. He does not flash. He doesn't make an impact week to week. You never, you barely ever hear his name called, and that's an issue now. Like I like a, the second is a an offshoot of the first. He rarely, if ever, gets to the quarterback. You'll never hear you'll never hear his name called. Um, as far as getting a, a, a pressure on the quarterback, getting QB hits, anything like that. This guy is never even in a position to possibly get a roughing the passer because he's never even there when the ball's thrown. He's still not even within camera shot of the quarterback. And with that being said, that all equates to Brian Burns' job being a lot harder this year. Because Brian Burns is an excellent pass rusher, but he does have the tendency to over pursue sometimes as well as miss a, uh, occasionally miss a tackle here or there. Now, last year with Hassan Reddick attacking from the other side, this was not an issue because we had a sure tackler and an, a, a just as effective pass rusher coming from the other side so they could always meet at the quarterback. And if we had that this year with the ascension of Derrick Brown, that 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 D line would just be monstrous. But Yitor has has not been able to provide any of that. Now, with that being said on my thoughts, the last thing I want to discuss in this video are Yitor's stats. As you can see here, he's played 34 games in, a, in the NFL so far, and these are his stats, and might I say they are pretty abysmal. He's only been able to put up six and a half sacks in two in, in all in um two and a half years in the NFL. So far through eight games this year, he has only put up a half of a sack, which is absolutely terrible. He is only a he is only um he's only accounted for nine tackles for loss from a defensive end position. Even if you're not getting to the quarterback getting hits, you are an active participant in in the run defense. And through 34 and through 34 games to only be able to put up nine tackles for loss that is that is atrocious man 14 QB hits in 34 games as I alluded to earlier what I see on the field and he never flashing that shows up in the box score as well because he never even gets hits on the QB let alone the chance to sack the QB he only has one pass deflection ever He's been on the field 65, he's played, um, since coming into the league on average, he's played 65 plus dis, um, percent of the defensive snaps on the um, for, uh, for the Panthers, and he's only knocked down one pass at the line of scrimmage. You know that thing that the, um, the, the Arizona Cardinals did nine times to Baker Mayfield when we played earlier in the year? Well, throughout this guy's entire career, he's only been able to do that one time he's only forced two fumbles this just means that when he makes tackles he isn't a big hitter he isn't able to jar the ball loose um so like as 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 a defensive end and as a starting defensive end if you aren't able to bring these things to the table in a, a in a loud fashion in an effective manner why are you the starter and i i just honestly don't know so so, so that brings me to the end of the video all right, you all let me know what you think down below. Is Yito Gross Models pretty much a bust or a letdown? Either one of those things apply in my mind. Uh, do you think he was a wasted pick? What do you think about those guys that we actually passed over for Gross Models, man? Whatever you think about this video, leave your comments down below. Make sure to like the video. Remember, I am Jamario Rashad. This is the way I see it, and I'm out. Peace.